Welcome to Wisconsin Family. I'm Janet Cresson. And I'm Justin Riley, and we're here at the Steinway & Sons Piano Gallery over on the west side of Madison, and I'm really looking forward to speaking with Ben Garber, the owner, later on in the program, because he's going to talk a little bit more about the inner workings of, of the piano, and he's got a, such a vast knowledge base of how the piano works. And we're not just talking about how the piano works, but rather how to restore a piano. Now, you don't get a free education from this necessarily, <laughs> but we do get an idea, kind of a sneak peek at, you know, how how to go about deciding if a piano can be restored. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really interesting conversation. Yeah, if you thought they just sold pianos here, you're way off because right. they, do they do so much more. So much more, yeah. so much more. We also have Mother's Day and Easter coming up and we have Fired Up Pottery coming. Yep. So we're fired up to talk to Kim. She is amazing, creative, so helpful, and she has a studio on Monono Drive where you can just walk in and make art. Yep, yep, and that's one of the things that she really wants to kind of drive home to people is that you don't, these aren't art classes that you go in to take that you have to sign up for and then show up every week. You literally just walk in, the staff is waiting for you, and you make art. Now it's the, brilliant. And this is for y your kids, ideally, I think, to make art maybe as a gift for mom. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I might make something for my mom. Who knows? Oh, that's true. Yeah. So big kids, too. Yeah, big kids. <laughs> big kids. Uh, we're also going to be joined uh, by Tim from Copperhead Contracting. And this is a company that just literally they do it all. Mm -hmm. If it involves building, remodeling, anything, repairing, they do it. So if you need a home built from scratch, yes, they can. If you want to put a few new windows in your house, Yes, they can. There's no job too big or too small. And they stay busy all winter long, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've never met Tim before, so if you have a project coming up that you've been contemplating, maybe a little spring fixer-upper kind of thing, yep. you'll want to meet Tim and learn more about their company. Absolutely, and you'll want to probably get in touch with him sooner than, <laughs> yeah. rather than later when they really hit their busy season. <laughs> that's true. So that's coming up right after the break here on Wisconsin Family, so stick around. Hey folks, welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We're here at the Steinway & Sons Piano Store and we're looking forward to talking with Ben a little bit later on in the program. But first, we're talking construction and I'm joined now by Tim with Copperhead Contractor. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. And it's Copperhead Contracting, not Contractors. Yes. I almost said Contractors, so I apologize for that. So, you know, give us a, give us an update. What's going on with Copperhead Contracting? Are you guys staying busy? We are very busy. Oh, we wow. have contracts and construction jobs going everywhere. Yeah, that's incredible. What are some of the, the jobs that you're currently working on right now? Do you have any? Right now, um, we're working on several big remodel jobs. We've got okay. uh, two whole house remodel jobs going on right this second. We have uh, lots of roofing jobs, siding jobs, and it's becoming the season for hail damage and yeah, you know, it's, it's upon things us. like that. So it's going to get really busy. We've uh, got quite a few uh, fire restoration jobs going on. Sure, yeah. So. We stay very busy. Stay busy. Even during the slow time, it seems yes. like you guys stay busy <laughs> there wasn't, all year long. wasn't really much of a slow season this year, right? which right. is good. That's good for you guys, yeah, definitely. One of those mixed blessing sort of situations, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> work, work, work. Glad for the work, though. Mm -hmm. So, Tim, this is your first time on Wisconsin Family. What's your role at Copperhead Contracting? I am a construction site supervisor. Okay. I make sure that you know things go the way they're supposed to go, even though nothing ever goes the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the world of construction. Right. So that means you're, you're right out there on site? Yes. Every day? Yep. A lot of different sites? I bounce around from site to site depending on where we are and what's going on and, you know, who's out at the different sites to make sure things get taken care of. But I try to make sure, you know, I'm on site, I take care of my guys during the day and we all yeah. get, you know, get some stuff done. And speaking of all the sites, what kind of range does Copperhead uh, serve? In? We have a very big range. We do, you know, Wisconsin, Illinois, we go as far out. We have offices in Nebraska, so wow. you know, we take care of quite a range. I mean, if you need it done, we'll get there and take care of it. Wow. So that means you have some windshield time, probably, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit of windshield time. So let's talk a little bit, in case some of our viewers haven't are, are not familiar with uh, Copperhead Contracting, give us an overview of what are some of the services you guys provide. We do everything. I mean, roofing siding we do window installation mm -hmm. doors we do everything from you know single remodels to 
complete overhaul jobs. We, you know, we start, we do new construction as well. Mm -hmm. If you need something done, we can take care of it pretty much anywhere and everything. So is it safe to say no project too small or too big? <laughs> I would say that that's probably the case. Pretty I mean, close. Sometimes big, big <laughs> projects are harder to manage, but you know we can get through it, and take sure. care of it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always thought it'd be great if you guys just did some catering or parties or something like that. <laughs> something just completely outside the realm of of construction and remodel. I would say. Some of us are okay, but I don't know if you'd want all of those guys serving you uh, food and okay. making you drinks. Uh, you know. Well, obviously you'd want to hire a few new folks probably. So. We need a little help with that department, but we can build you a house. Yeah, okay, good, good. Someone so, else can throw the party. Then. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I think you have someone on staff that does that pretty well, that brings in food. I can't remember uh, if it's Ruth. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of projects, Justin had asked you if some of your current projects, do you have a favorite, a personal favorite of what kind of project you like to supervise? I really don't really have a preference as to what I like, but most of what I like to see is, you know, start to finish. I, I like to make sure that things go smoothly as mm -hmm. possible. I like to make sure that we're, our guys are doing different types of things because monotony can be, you know, a killer. If right. you don't get the variety out there and you get your guys doing different things, it can get real, real bad. And right. it sounds like you guys do have variety. We have a, a ton of different things going on right now, so it, it makes, you know, the days go by fast, you know, there's a lot of hours right. in a week. To see, you know, where it was from the beginning, and you get to see the progression stages of it, and then when it's all finished and you present it to the homeowner, that's, it's very satisfactory. Yeah, yes. Tim, we have a lot of moms and dads that watch our program, homeowners especially, and so some of them might be watching this, you know, thinking about having a remodel done themselves. If they're considering that, let's say they give you guys a call, what are some things that they'll need to do to prepare for having people to come into their home for two to three days or even a couple of weeks to, to do some of these um, remodel activities? Once we come out and we've sat down with them and explained to them how the process works, when we actually get on site, the first thing we do is make sure that they understand that there's gonna be dust, there's yeah. gonna be dirt. Uh, we do our best to cover everything up as minimal as, as, minimal as <laughs> we can because you know nobody wants to have their house all torn apart you know for weeks and months at a time right but it is part of the process we do have a lot of equipment? trucks equipment ladders you know things that have to go in and out uh, depending on the weather you have rain we have staging stuff you know yep. sometimes we'll tent things out to make sure that we can keep as dry as possible right. exactly you know tarp everything off just generally make sure that we're not being the cause of your unhappiness <laughs> while we're in your home. Right, right. Well, hopefully the payoff, I mean, I know the payoff is, is uh, well worth the time and, and uh, everything that the homeowner has to it kind is. of endure during that time. So. When you see the smile on their face when yeah. you're all done with everything and they're truly happy with what they have and yep. you've made their dream, it doesn't get any better. Doesn't get any better. Sounds like he'll take care of you. Tim from <laughs> Copperhead Contracting, thank you so much for joining us today. Don't go away, there is more Wisconsin Family coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We're here at Steinway & Sons Piano Gallery over on the west side of Madison. We're going to talk with Ben Garber later on in the program. But first, believe it or not, we're talking mm -hmm. Easter and Mother's Day, and we're joined now by Kim from Fired Up Pottery. How are you, Kim? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Always good to have you with us. You always bring such an impressive display. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about what some of the stuff we're seeing is, and then and also what you have going on leading up to Easter and Mother's Day. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, so we are a walk-in make art studio, right. and what that means is like you don't have to take a class, you mm -hmm. don't have to call ahead, mm -hmm. you can just show up and we'll help you. I'm gonna explain that because like a lot of people are like, hmm. don't I need an appointment? Right. It's like, no, right. <laughs> that's what it means, you yeah. can just come. Um, so we're ready when you are. So, you yeah. know, the kids have napped or they're little toddlers and yeah. you wanna take them in and do some projects for Mother's Day or something like that, then, then you can just drop by and do it, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always a great thing to, to be able to not have to make those plans necessarily. And right. Especially when you're on a kid's change. schedule. Yeah, yeah <laughs> when you're on a kid's when schedule. You have kids. Yeah, things do change <laughs> when you have kids. Yeah, it could be a good one moment, bad the next, and yeah. good the next, and it mm -hmm. goes like that. Absolutely. But, um, you know, the thing is, um, Mother's Day, um, a lot of mothers don't want to 
don't want to um, you know know exactly what they're getting mm -hmm. but they definitely want something that they like so it's like how do yeah. you shape that and right. uh, so uh, a good way to do it is just tell somebody to bring them to Fired Up Pottery. Okay. We'll make yeah. an art project with them. Okay. You won't have any idea what they made unless yeah. there's a specific item you picked out like I want a mug yeah. or I want a serving bowl or I want a cookie jar. You know, right. then we can do that. But you know, even if the little four year old says, like we went to Fired Up today and everybody's like, Oh, the surprise is is you know no longer a good surprise. <laughs> right. um, you know you cannot predict what's going to come out of our store. Yeah. No more than than you know you can't. I mean you can say well kid went to fire a pottery they made something I don't know what it is yeah. I'll be surprised. Yeah. So, and yeah. you know what even if you said we went to fire up pottery and we made a serving bowl even then you still you don't still wouldn't know. know. You don't yeah. Know you exactly wouldn't know, no, no like. idea what it's exactly. going to actually look like. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's our job to kind of help make it so that it's not mud color. We have different ways right. of painting with toddlers. Right. And you know to. Get good, help you get good handprints and footprints mm -hmm. and things like that. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's good, yeah. And you know, you talked about how it's walk in, make art. Mm -hmm. So some people might be looking at some of these things and saying, "Well, I, 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 don't, I can't imagine walking in and making something." Yeah, like this, this looks yeah. so fancy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this talk, is, this is, is not yeah. fancy at all. This is like this is glass. It's like making a sugar cookie. Mm -hmm. You start with a piece of glass. We've already cut out the circle. That's not hard. Yeah. All right. You put glue on it. You spread the glue around, and then you just decorate. Yeah. Sprinkle. Your... Yeah, just yeah, decorate. And and little two and three year olds can do glass. Yes. Because we have kids safe glass that's already rounded on the edges. Sure, yeah. And so this one here is just random pieces in a color pattern. Okay. But it looks easy, but it's not. So And okay. it looks nice. Looks, looks hard but it's looks not. Hard, it, hard, I got but that not, backwards. Yeah. yeah, it looks Looks yeah. easy and it is. No, yeah, it totally <laughs> is easy. <laughs> it's like making a cookie and we do all the shaping. Right. So you're not near anything this hot is or anything. Yeah, that's the dragonfly. Wow. Yeah. Same wow. similar Same process. Same similar thing, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So remind us what the what the process is. You put the glue on, you put the glass on, and then, and then you, it, you heat it. Give it to us. No, okay. you give it to us and we do all the heating. Right, right. So really all you're doing is decorating a cookie. Okay. Okay. And then you walk away. Sure. Oh, this is clever. So we've got a, a butterfly that are actually footprints. Yeah. Footprints, yep. Mm -hmm. And with footprints we can do multicolors like that because mm -hmm. the foot doesn't clench like a hand does. Right, um, yeah. On a hand, if I'm going to do multi-colors on a hand print and I want it to stay like that, the kids should be at least five years old, four right. or five, as long as they can keep their hand open and not squish. You know, right, a yeah. little two and three year old's going to go like this, oh look, pain in my fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I can picture my son doing that. So. Yeah, like that. <laughs> well, this is a one of a kind for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Actually, we, and we can help with hand prints and stuff. We get a lot of people coming in with yeah. Pinterest. Um, Pinterest examples too. This one is just that's a, a great idea. idea. Yeah, go to Pinterest, look at ideas there. Look at this one. This one is just adorable. These we don't little... invent all this stuff. What does it say? Happy, happy, um, chicky, chicky, chicky spring. Happy, chicky, chicky spring. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Yeah. So whether it's spring or Easter or Mother's Day, yeah, or even it. Father's Day, which Father's is a Day. few months down the road. I mean, you know, I wouldn't mind yeah. getting something like this from one of my kids. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just say like, hey, please take the kids right. to Fire Up Pottery, do a project, surprise me. Right. It's all good. Yeah. Okay, I've been dying to, to look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> They've been like, just wait, Janet, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hands off. No, if you're looking for a functional gift. Yeah. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Isn't uh -huh. that crazy? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I tuned it over so you can see the, the stoppers don't come with it okay. right now. They'll be there when you pick it up because okay. I don't want to give you the stoppers and then you have them at home and um, decide that where did I put them. So right, we right. take the stoppers and yeah. when it's a finished product we put them in for you so it's all ready to use. That sounds like it was a, a, a policy made from experience with people losing <laughs> stoppers Maybe. I'm guessing. Yeah you know yeah like early early like year one 12 years ago yeah. yeah sometimes the stoppers would go with sometimes they wouldn't and it's yeah. like then we'd end up with somebody has two stoppers and somebody's missing one. Yeah. Okay another <laughs> functional gift. This is hilarious yeah. by the way I it love is. this frog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we've seen purple frogs, you know, yeah. we see multicolored frogs, we see rainbow frogs, yeah. you know, so yeah, they can be most anything. Your imagination is your limit. It I is, would think he yeah. would be very fun to paint because he's got all these dots. All the dots. Yeah. Kids uh, love painting dots. Uh, yeah. Well, lots, cool. lots of ideas here, <laughs> lots of expertise, lots of help at Fired Up Pottery. Lots of, lots of help. All you got to do is <laughs> walk in and make art. Kim from Fired Up Pottery, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Don't go away. There's more Wisconsin Family coming up right after the break, so stick around. We're back.
We're back here at the Steinway & Sons Piano Gallery with Wisconsin Family, and I'm really excited because we've got a topic that I don't believe we've covered yet as, as since we've started filming here at Steinway & Sons, and we're joined now by owner Ben Garber. How are you, Ben? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having us here again today. Sure. So I'm really excited because we're talking about piano restoring or restoration. Yep. So two questions. First of all, what does it mean if someone says that a piano has been refurbished, rebuilt, or restored? And is there a difference between all three of those terms? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that there's any standardization for these words. People okay. will always throw them around, right? Sure. I had my piano redone, restored, refurbished sure. is a real popular one. Uh, I don't think that they have any meaning unless you've really gone over every part of the piano to determine what's been done, what, okay. what maybe needs to still be done. Okay. Uh, restoration should imply that the complete piano was brought to its original factory condition. Sure. In some cases, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, people will say something's restored and it really hasn't been. It's really more of a uh, aftermarket It's job. been made better. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. As yeah. good as it can be. <laughs> maybe. It depends yeah. on the case. Yeah. Right, right. Interesting so, stuff. For example, soundboards are a popular issue. Um, and there are people that maybe have a, like a little warehouse or a little workshop and they'll say, well, you know, we put new soundboards in pianos. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that's a very hard thing to do. Steinway has an entire uh, floor of their factory dedicated to soundboard installation and it takes mm. months to do it properly and right. the materials are very expensive. It's so specified in terms of how you put a soundboard in a Steinway piano that they won't sell the, the part to anyone anymore mm. because the part in and of itself doesn't mean anything. Right. So when a guy cuts out the soundboard and drops in whatever, it's kind of like putting a Fiat engine in a Porsche or, you know, it's, right. it's just, uh, right. it kind of takes that whole instrument and, yeah. and devalues it. Right, absolutely. And when we talk about soundboards, I mean, Obviously, this is probably the most important part of the piano, really, because yeah, you don't yeah. have the resonance without the soundboard. So if something goes wrong with the soundboard, is it is it better to replace? I mean, or repair? I mean, is it better to repair? Yeah, it depends on the circumstances, yeah. and this is where you need to have the piano checked out carefully. If it's a small issue, a small crack or something, it can be repaired. Um, and then again, if it has huge issues or problems and it doesn't have what we call um, any resonance anymore, right. then uh, replacement, but really the only way to do a new soundboard in a Steinway is to send it back to New York and have it done in the factory, which wow. we can do. Wow. So speaking of that, uh, do you, what do you do here in the store? Obviously we know you sell pianos, you have lessons and, yep. and so much of that, but what about the restoration or rebuilding or repairing? Yeah, we do all different jobs for, for piano repair and restoration. Um, it can be as major as sending the piano back to New York and have it completely restored to original like new condition. Or it could be just a small repair, like um, something as small as new hammers or key recovering, that's a popular one. Mm -hmm. The keys get all cracked and people would like to have them recovered. So uh, it's really customized based on the needs of every customer, but we do all of it. And you're the one that would do the assessment. So if someone had a, a, maybe an emotional attachment, maybe it's a, an heirloom or a hand-me-down or whatever it is, you would come in and make that assessment of this, yep. this could be restored, it's worth restoring. Yep, we go through all of those steps and okay. what it costs and what it needs. And yeah. yeah, there are times when it, it could be the value of the piano may be lower than the cost of restoration. Right. And so <clears throat> we let people know that too. Hmm, how yeah. interesting. Absolutely. And, and when you are, are examining a piano, how do you know exactly, how can you tell exactly what it needs to be fully restored? And how can you tell if a piano is not worth restoring? Yeah, well, <laughs> a lot of it comes from experience right. and taking measurements on, on certain parts. Um, and then, of course, we have data for, for values of pianos. Mm. But uh, you, re you really have to do that appraisal to find mm. out what's going on underneath the scenes. Um, Last time you were here, we were looking at a piano that actually had been sort of uh, nominally redone not very well by, mm. by someone, and I think I played a little bit on it. This time I have a piano for you here that's been expertly restored, so okay. it's actually a completely, um, a completely redone instrument. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't know it by just looking at it. You right. really have to get under the hood to find out. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you do have a, a toolbox full of fancy tools to make all those measurements, but mm -hmm. can you tell just by playing a piano, you know, yeah. what's been done to it, if it's been worked on? You really can't just by playing. I know a lot of people play and they say, well, this one feels good, this one sounds good, and that that's a, a fair assessment just 
for the player to make, but it doesn't tell you anything about what's happening in the pin block underneath the, underneath the plate or if the soundboard has full resonance. Those are things that we have to measure separately. So you really do need the fancy tools. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't tell you what kind of parts were used either, and that can have a lot to do with value of, a, of an instrument. So mm -hmm. um, value and uh, longevity are not accessible just by sitting down and playing. <laughs> So, uh, how old is this piano that we're looking this at? This is here? a 1903 Steinway, what? believe it or not. Yeah, right. And this is 114 I mean, years, 15 years old. It looks amazing, and, and it's it it's like new now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. yeah. So, what's been replaced? I mean, can you tell us what's been replaced on this uh, this instrument? So, all of the parts have been replaced, okay. and because it's a Steinway, we still have factory parts being made today. So okay. that's an easy thing to do. So we use all Steinway parts. That's something to watch out for because a lot of people will drop aftermarket parts into a piano. Right. They're cheaper. Right. Um, the soundboard was replaced on this piano because okay. 1903 is a long time. Yes. Uh, all new strings, new pin blocks. So this is really, and refinished, um, top to bottom, really everything's been restored. So basically the shell is, is all the that shell, remains from the original. Yeah, the plate, the, the, mostly the big wood parts. Sure. Um, but it, it'll last another hundred years now. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you talked about using aftermarket parts and how you want to try to avoid that if possible. Uh, and that's sometimes a cheaper alternative, but not necessarily a good idea. What are the best parts to use when restoring a, a Steinway? Yeah, panel? Steinway parts are amazing. They're made mm -hmm. of the highest grade wood, hard rock maple. They mm -hmm. last as long as action parts can last and they perform better than any other in the industry. So, you know, we always use Steinway parts in the Steinway piano. Now, Ben, we've gotten to know you over the past few visits, but some of our viewers may not know your history, your background, your education when it comes to playing, performing, teaching, and repairing. What is what is your repairing qualification? Yeah, I studied this in, uh, in master's at Rice University, so I got a degree in that part. I have a performance degree and also sort of a tuning, rebuilding, uh, piano tech degree. Piano tech degree. The guy yeah. does it all. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So this was what we did in the school. We had to take pianos and fix them up, and that yeah. was, you know, part of our project. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you had to do kind of like a final project. They'd bring you a piano, yep. and that they was. They did. Yeah. How long did that take you? I mean, were you working alone on that? Uh, yeah, working alone. It it takes yeah, you know, sixty to hundred hours to sort wow. of put a whole new action in a piano. Let's say. Wow. Um, and then from there, of course, you know, any degree just takes you to the next place. So then I started working for a Steinway dealer in Houston, and we did sure. the same kind of thing. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Well, this is the piano man here, <laughs> teacher, performer, uh, educator, and technician as well. You do it all. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks. well. <laughs> yep, and well. Yes, thanks for having us here. And thank you to all of our viewers. We're out of time today. We're Wisconsin family, and we'll see you next time. The beat, clap your hands, take control.